This is the Writer's Circle of Durham Region panel discussion on getting published in the new millennium. We're going to jump right in, and I want to ask a question of our panelists uh, on this particular occasion. What's good and bad with traditional publishing? Ruth? Um, well, certainly the good with traditional publishing is that it is a known, um, a known commodity. You know when you see the books on the bookshelf and it's there, you know, there's some kind of prestige with that, right? Um, of course, the bad thing with traditional publishing is trying to get your book on that uh, bookshelf. And uh, even doing all of the right things uh, doesn't, always, uh, doesn't always guarantee, as a matter of fact, it doesn't guarantee a darn thing, you know? When, James, when you talk to your mm -hmm. students, what do you tell them about the upside and the downside of publishing currently and traditionally? I think on the, on the traditional side, uh, you have to be prepared to spend a lot of time learning how to be a good writer. I, I think uh, people who think they can just write something and send it in and they'll get published are so rare, I don't even know of any cases really. But you have to really work on your craft, you have to, uh, you have to share your writing with other writers and other teachers so that you learn where you are in terms of the process. How good am I right now? Um, am I able to tell a story that people really like and is engaging and convincing? And that's what you have to learn to do first. Once you have something that's, uh, that, that basically you get a, people telling you, why haven't you sent this to a publisher yet? You're ready to send it to a publisher then. But to just send it in off the top of your head, I think is, or just write it and send it in, I think is a mistake in today's culture because the publishers are expecting the manuscripts to come in in really good shape already. I just want to say the reason they're expecting that is because they have very few editorial support staff anymore. Mm -hmm. The days of having um, an editor there um, in the traditional uh, right. publishing houses who actually um, uh, focuses on your work are it, it's just becoming a, a less common thing. Right. Yeah. Erin, you haven't worked with traditional pub publishers or... Uh, um, traditional is the only I've worked with actually. Okay, I was, I'm, okay I was confusing uh, your yeah. background with Dawn's. Talk a little bit about Personally, talk a little bit about yeah. your experience, both the good and the bad, with traditional publishing. All right. Um, I, I've only published two books so far. The first was uh, Draco's Fire with HIP Books, and it was a little different than, than the normal traditional publishing because it was the publisher had hired three of us to write a series that didn't exist before. Normally, you would create your manuscript and polish it, as James and Ruth were saying. You, you'd make it as good as you could, you'd run it through your writing group, you'd take courses, and you'd bring it up to that level before you even sent it anywhere near a publisher. This was a publisher initiating the project. Um, my second book, Border Patrol, which will be out with Orca Sports in May, is a little more, is a little more close to the, the traditional publishing model because although I did send a proposal first, um, I, I still wrote the manuscript according to my ideas and then submitted it to them. It sounds like you had a lot of control. It sounds like you were able to do what you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. what's, mm -hmm. what's the downside to that kind of process where perhaps if you were working with a larger house perhaps or mm -hmm. one that had stronger control over your work, they would sort of um, almost negotiate with you. you in know, a, in I, I wouldn't say process. that it's like that. Um, working with Orca was wonderful because th they liked my manuscript, they were happy with it and they signed the contract. but. There were definitely things that they wanted changed. And Such as? I'm trying to remember. Um, the, the character needed to be more sympathetic in the early scenes. And um, I, I've actually, Orca's out in BC. I haven't met them. But there was a lot of back and forth between Sarah Arv Harvey, the editor, and myself um, through email and on the phone. And we went through that manuscript, I, I think, at least two or three times after it was already accepted. Um, yeah, uh, that was to me. That's the big plus of the traditional publishing process. I like having someone to work with and someone to go through those steps with. And coming closer to the publication date now, um, I, I'm interacting with other people from Orca. There's Leslie, the marketing person. There are some other people I've been emailing, and I like that. I like that there's a team there of people who know things about publishing that I don't know, and they're going to help me and guide me and mm -hmm. you know make sure this is a good product that hits the shelves. Yeah. Don, you work without a net. You're on your own. That's right. Why have you chosen that? Give us, again, a, your sense of the traditional publishing route which you have chosen not to take. Correct. Well, mine was a conscious choice to do it uh, self-publishing route. Um, I felt, I knew what the end vision was for the product, and it is a niche market. 
Um, and fortunately for the last seven years, I have enough contacts out in that marketplace, and I think that will make it easier for me to, to distribute my book. So that's why I chose that route. Although I hear what Erin is saying, it would be nice to have a team. I'm a team of one, uh, but fortunately I was very, very lucky creating a team around me by selecting a fantastic editor, a uh, fantastic illustrator, designer, and I've, I've hired a PR mm -hmm. company. Which is interesting, because in the traditional role, those would be chosen for you. Mm -hmm. That's right. The right. publisher says, yes. thanks for your manuscript, Don. Here's the editor who's going to cut it. Here's mm -hmm. the promoter and, and mm -hmm. marketing people who are going to handle its promotion. We'll see you around. You'll be, you can come back to pick up the royalties later on kind of thing. Right. And is that a conscious choice, a sense that you didn't want to have anybody messing with your baby? Or was it partly because you mentioned the niche marketing yes. and the niche uh, targeting of your, of your work, that's the best way to get to your audience? I believe that's the best way to get to my audience. And um, I felt confident that I could find the right resources to work with. Mm -hmm. And I was very fortunate in finding, a, as I said, a fantastic team of people um, who I did my homework, interviews, and talked to former clients. and. It was a very, very positive process for me. But the reality may be, if you didn't go with Harper Collins, say, mm. that they can give you 50 times the distribution, and possibly even world distribution, which would be tougher for you, perhaps, given that you're just starting out with that first book. That's true. I think part of the reason I made the choice to do self-publishing as well, one of the second factors is control. Um, there is more element of control that you have when you are self-publishing and making selections. And as you said, if I handed over my manuscript to a company, off it goes. And it may not be the same product or essence that I started out with. Ruth, you invite mm -hmm. that. You want to have that. that yeah. You want to have that involvement from uh, an editorial group to give you some guidance, to give you the encouragement. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, and that, uh, for me personally, probably comes from the fact that uh, many years ago, well, back in I did rule. <laughs> back in the early <laughs> 70s, I, um, I worked for McClelland and Stewart at the time when Jack McClelland was there. And it, it had to be one of the most exciting times in Canadian publishing because you had someone like Jack who really, he pushed the envelope on just about everything. And the literary community in Canada, certainly the publishing community in Canada at the time, looked very much down their nose. At, uh, at Jack as these kinds of stunts that, uh, that he did. And you know, it's unfortunate really that that, that tradition didn't continue because um, they weren't stunts. They were a little zany, they were um, exciting, they were different. They were doing something with Canadian literature that wasn't covered in dust. And that's a really that's a really nice thing because literature is and it, it certainly can be a very um, exciting um, uh, like I get excited writing and mm -hmm. if I read something that's great I get excited about reading it you know so I um, I'd like to see that kind of energy in the traditional publishing world sadly I don't think it's there and in fact if I ran a business the way traditional Canadian publishers, for the major, on the majority of cases, in my experience, if I ran a business that way, I'd have closed up and gone, uh, closed up shop long ago. Last mm. chance to use Sorry. the change on this one, because um, you deal with students who are aspiring mm -hmm. to all mm -hmm. these things. Very quickly, give us a sense of one or, or two or the three of the, the valuable things of the traditional publishing age that uh, Ruth is lamenting is gone. Mm. I think um, the days of the of the uh, book tour. Uh, I know several writers who have been published who aren't going on book tours. Uh, their their publishers are not going to take them on a tour. They can't afford it anymore. Uh, one of the reasons is that the government isn't financing book publishers the way they used to. They used to have a lot more cash. They don't. Um, I think the 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 thing I, that I, I think I'm a lot of people are coming to me and ask. It's, through my publishing company, Pecan Press, if they can publish a book through me. And when I go through the process, like Don has explained, where you've got to, you've got to arrange to have a, a, a graphic designer to do your cover, you've got to arrange someone to do the layout, you've got to arrange an editor, you have to have an editor. And you have to look at how you're going to distribute and actually promote your own book. Um, what what, what they, ha they don't understand is you are taking on the role of the traditional publisher yourself. You're taking on all that responsibility yourself. The nice thing about today is, it's cheap enough because of digitization and a variety of other methods that you can actually pull it off. And uh, someone like Don is going to be very successful because she works hard at every area of it. 